What's up, everybody? Here to talk about Transcendence this morning, give a little review about the film. I had recorded a video in my car right after I saw it and just didn't like the way it turned out. Wanted to think on the film a little bit. So here we go. Transcendence, uh, directed by Wally Pfister, and it's his first time out as director. Usually he's a cinematographer. He has a ton of cinematography credits, mostly Nolan films. Um, and a bunch of other films as well. I mean, but all of Nolan's recent films, Nolan co-produced this film as well. And of course, it stars Johnny Depp as this doctor who's working on creating an AI. His wife is Rebecca Hall. She's another doctor who works with him. Paul Bettany's a doctor who works with him also. And Morgan Freeman's another doctor that works in another lab. And Kelly Murphy's in this as like, Homeland Defense agent or something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly what he was. But the film involves Johnny Depp uh, basically merging with an AI and becoming like a superhuman computer. Um, and it's all stuff you've seen before in a bunch of other sci-fi movies. Um, I'm going to give a couple book recommendations in this. Um, if you've never read this book, The Singularity is Near, it's not a really a sci-fi book. Uh, Ray Kurzweil is like a futurist. He works for Google now, but um, he helped design... Kurzweil keyboards a long time ago. He's helped develop a ton of technology, a bunch of artificial intelligence stuff. He's kind of like um, a futurist basically now, and they've done documentaries on him. He's just a fascinating person himself. But this book in talks about the singularity coming in the next 30 years, man merging with computer, computers that you know have the brain capacity of a normal human, all this crap. And he has a positive outlook. This movie kind of has a negative outlook. Uh, some of the characters in this movie are like neo-Luddite terrorists, and that's something you could see happening if uh, this type of AI was on the verge of being created. So I found that somewhat believable. I mean, they're, they're a little Hollywoodish. Um, kind of reminded me of that cheesy movie, The East, which should have been a lot better itself. But the strong part of this movie is the beginning. At the end, it breaks down into a total like Hollywood, you know, movie, and you know, writing that line between really hard sci-fi and Hollywood. Unfortunately, this movie bumps more into the Hollywood side, and that part I didn't like. Uh, if you don't have a basic understanding of, you know, the singularity and uh, AI and nanotechnology and all that crap, uh, you might get a little lost, I think. I don't know. It, it was pretty basic. They didn't go too deep into the science. Um, it was interesting in the beginning, like I said, at the end when they get into the, like, battle scenes and all that. That's where it got pretty freaking cheesy. Um... But that's, I think, how nanotechnology would look from what I understand from what I've read. It would look like a little kind of like dark little misty cloud. Um, so the CGI probably is somewhat accurate, actually. Um, the real bad things I like real nitpicking was I don't think the U.S. government would allow an AI to escape like this um, and just lose track of it. And I don't think they would allow scientists like that. Uh, to just be off the map and not being tracked, especially with the events that happened at the beginning of this film. That was one of the biggest things uh, that the government would just ignore this for a couple of years. And secondly, the response to it when they find out what's going on is like, send three soldiers. I'm like, this is like an AI that could destroy the world. You guys know that. It's pretty obvious. Um, why not have a better response? Uh, nobody ever thought of using a nuke or a bunker buster weapon. Uh, I mean, I know those are obviously controlled by technology, but that's the flip side of the coin. How come Johnny Depp didn't take control of any extra satellites or drone technology and attack his enemies with those types of technologies? They kind of explained that at the end, why Johnny Depp didn't do it, which I kind of liked in the in the part that I noticed I read uh, like at least one or two negative reviews. And they seem to miss the parts where Paul Bettany and Rebecca Hall are talking, and that's where the clues to the story really lie. And maybe they didn't do a good enough job on delivering them because some of the dialogue in this movie is horrible and you know, the script, like I said, breaks down at the end, but just some of the dialogue in general is bad. But the scenes between them two are the strongest when they're explaining sort of like the philosophical things behind the AI. And you got to just pay attention to that. And there's also a scene where Morgan Freeman says something about even if it was Johnny Depp in the computer, you know, that type of, uh, you know, expansion of the brain, you still wouldn't be the same person after that. Even if you started as, you know, a normal human, once you were tied into that much technology and you never had to breathe or sleep again, you know, that would change you into something else. So I thought those kind of topics were kind of lost in the muddle of the Hollywoodness, but they were there. They kind of explained both sides. So it's not totally anti-technology. Um, overall, I'm going to give the movie a 3.5 out of 5. It was originally going to be 4 because I really liked the subject matter. And um, yeah, that's my second uh, book review um, recommendation here is going to be Robopocalypse. That's how the end of this movie reminded me of another book that Steven Spielberg was supposed to make into a movie, which I don't have on me because it's in my iPhone. I read it on there. But it's called Robopocalypse. It was written by a roboticist. And it's basically World War Z with robots. Read it. It's fun. It's a real quick read. Uh, definitely not as uh, thick as this in the computer science crap. But yeah, 
Robopocalypse, that's how the ending of this movie was. So I bet those guy who wrote the script probably read both those books. Uh, definitely, and probably many others. Uh, so 3.5 out of 5 for me. Um, I'll wait. Hopefully Spielberg will make uh, Robopocalypse and uh, make me happy. Uh, make up for this movie. But yeah, it's a decent sci-fi movie. A little too Hollywoodish for me. And that's it. If you've seen this... Singularity. If you've seen Transcendence, let me know what you thought down below. Uh, if you've read anything about the Singularity nanotechnology, let me know what you think down below. Do you think, you know, we're going to have that big jump like Ray Kurzweil thinks where, you know, he does have a point that, you know, 30 years ago, a computer took up the size of a room and now we have that same computing power on our iPhone. That's a fact that is unarguable and computer processing power is always doubling uh, every whatever, 16, 18 months like that. So he has a lot of facts on his side. Um, it's kind of interesting if you read into it. Um, yeah, let me know what you think down below. Sorry I rambled on. I don't want to chop this video up too much and edit it uh, because I want to spend time with my kids, basically. <laughs> so before computers take over the world. All right, guys. Um, see you soon. Bye.